This is Chicho. I've had uh, some people ask me to do some book recommendations. Uh, so while we're waiting for the next batch of videos to be done, I figured uh, I'd go through uh, some books here and, uh, and just throw some names out. Now, i got five books here for you guys. Um, one of them is just straight up mathematics, just talking about how the language of mathematics works. It uh, deals with calculus mainly, and it's basically for anyone who's taking calculus in grade 12, or anyone who's taking calculus, introductory calculus, uh, either at first couple of years of university or towards the end of high school. i got two books here that are talking about some of the theories in mathematics, or just basically theories, some, some food for thought, I guess. One of them is sort of a history lesson on how, um, how one of the greatest ideas in physics uh, about the known universe that we know of came about. And the fifth book is, as far as I'm concerned, one of the best pieces of literature ever written that I've ever come across again. And this is all personal opinion, of course. Now, let's talk about the first book. The first book is uh, Calculus. It's um, Calculus and Analytical Geometry by Howard Anton. Now, this is the third edition. I picked up this book uh, during my university days. Um, this was in late 1980s, early 1990s. Now, this is the third edition, and I think it was, uh, it, it was published in the late 1980s. Um, I have come across other calculus books, but this is the one that I keep on going back to. Um, it has excellent examples. It's, uh, it covers a lot of topics. I've only, with my calculus, uh, I've only gone through about three quarters of this book, maybe. So, you know, it was, uh, it was good enough for me for a couple of years of university um, for specifically techniques. One reason I really liked it because it had uh, a lot of examples. Now, I'm not sure which print, or if this is still in print, uh, this is in right now. So this is the third edition I had, and it was, you know, let's say 1990 or towards the 1990 thereabouts, plus or minus, um, well, it would be minus, I think. Uh, that was the last print run I came across. And it is definitely uh, the calculus book I reference. Um, so if you're interested in calculus, and it does cover functions and series and sequences, and some pre-calculus stuff. So it's, it's a great book for if you're you know, just stepping into calculus to pick it up. And I've I talked about this before, but um, the first time I took calculus at university, I failed it. I got like 34%. I had no idea what I was doing. And I came across this book the second time I was taking calculus at a different university. And initially, I, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I just kept on doing the work because, you know, I had to pass the course. And um, I think it was about two months into the course where when I was going through this, all of a sudden it just clicked for me. Calculus is just, you know, boom. You know the language made sense, so I went back. You know, about it was about three quarters, no, about halfway through the course, basically. Um, these are semester based, so four months uh, courses at university. So about halfway through the course, I ended up going back to the beginning and starting from page one of this again and going through everything, and it just became super easy. So this is the book I credit for uh, teaching me calculus, and that's the straight up uh, math, just dealing with the language of mathematics. The, the second book is um, hands down one of my favorite books. I still haven't finished it. Um, it's called Guru Lesher Bach. Um, the last time I tried reading this book, um, actually it's by uh, Douglas uh, Hofstetter. Uh, the last time I tried reading this book was about eight years ago. And uh, I picked it up and, uh, you know, before I picked it up, I, had, I have had, you know, this, this book has been in, or not this version, but one of the earlier uh, print runs has been in the family for a long time and I've tried reading it a few times but I never really got into it, I never took the time. So last time I tried reading this book was about eight years ago, nine years ago and I picked it up, I started reading it. It took me a few months to get to you know, 100, page 105, that's as far as I got and this book is about you know, 750 pages. I got to a page 105 and I realized that um, I didn't know enough to be able to finish this book. Um, you know, I read reviews of this book while I was reading it and before I picked it up reading it. And after reading the reviews um, online, I realized that a lot of people were reviewing it. They hadn't read it from cover to cover. Um, I've known about this book for over 20 years. And in that time, I've only come across two people who've read it from cover, from front to back. 
Uh, so that gives you an idea of uh, what, it, you know, how intense this book is. One of the reviews I read online, which really, uh, you know, gives you a pretty good idea of how intense this book is, is um, it compared to giving birth. Uh, that's how, uh, how much, how painful it was. I didn't find it painful. I found it extremely intense and extremely humbling because I would take, uh, you know, it would take me maybe a week to read 10 pages. I would read paragraphs over, you know, five or six times and then I would, you know, I would understand it and go on to another three or four pages and then I would read something else and, I, you know, something else would click and I would go, oh my God, and I had to go back 10 pages. So I kept on going back and forward. And the furthest I got was 105 pages and that's when I put it down and I realized that I wasn't informed enough. I didn't know enough. I wasn't educated enough. I was, um, simply put, I was too stupid to understand this book. I'm not sure if that's the best way of putting it, but that's how I felt. So, Guru Lesher Bach by uh, Douglas Hofstadter, highly recommended, and hopefully in, you know, in a couple of years or, you know, at some time when I have enough time, a few months put aside, I will go through this book and uh, read it from cover to cover and maybe write my own review about it. Now, this book did um, did introduce me to one thing, or did teach me one very important thing, uh, and that was that I had to really sit down and learn a lot, or learn a lot more about you know the world that I live in, and just thought patterns, and um, you know what it means to to think. So, after I was humbled, um, I put this book down and went on a few years of trying to educate myself. One of the first books I picked up, which um, it was actually, it was a very quick read, was uh, God's Equation by uh, Amir D. Axel. Amir D. Axel, I'm very bad with pronouncing names. Um, and this is a very quick read. Now, I usually mark up any scientific books I, I get. I know that's a no-no for some people, but for me, you know, I do it because I take notes. You know, I, I, I mark things up and I, you know, put little bookmarks in there and I write in them and highlight stuff. Uh, because I usually end up using um, scientific books or philosophical books as, uh, as reference. Now, this was a very quick read, very easy compared to uh, uh, Gude Lesherbach, but uh, very important. This book uh, really made me understand what it means to, uh, to learn something. Uh, this book is basically, the description is uh, Einstein, Einstein Relativity and the Expanding Universe. And what it is, is goes through sort of a biography of uh, how Einstein came up with the theory of uh, general relativity and special relativity. And he, how he was able to get information from a whole, different, whole bunch of different sources and you know, put it all together and present it, interpret it in his own way, and present his ideas that we've been, you know, we've used in the Industrial Revolution. So this book taught me that um, I have to reference sources. Uh, you know, it explained how Einstein went about contacting astronomers, physicists, mathematicians, uh, um, technicians who were able to collect data to, you know, give them. Uh, present the data where they could confirm his ideas, okay? So Einstein didn't come up with, um, you know, his theories, uh, you know, in one day or one week or one year. You know, it took him, I, I forget what the time frame is, but it took him, you know, 10 years to present general relativity or special relativity. I can't remember which one. It's been a while since I read this. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it, it made me understand that uh, the learning process is not... Uh, you know, it's not a four-month course or a one-year course or it's just not, you know, you just don't go, uh, you know, to high school and study and just learn something and then just put it aside. Um, the learning process step uh, is incremental. Uh, you learn one thing and that kicks you off into something else and you learn something else and you take this information from, from specialists in their own fields. You know, uh, Einstein, you know, he had to contact people who were much better at him in physics and mathematics to you know bounce off ideas so this book I highly recommend because it you know it explained that uh, the everybody is not in Tesla uh, you know Einstein was a genius but um, um, one, one, one plug I'm gonna put in there if you if you get a chance read anything 
uh, or anything about or anything from uh, Nikola Tesla if you can get your hands on it and uh, because that to me uh, Tesla was, uh, was, 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 was a complete genius and made Einstein look like a uh, you know, high school kid uh, as far as I'm concerned anyway uh, so uh, again Einstein which some people consider to be the, you know, the most influential person in, um, in science in physics in our understanding of the universe and how we we have been able to you know um, deal with uh, with our technological evolution basically um, he had to seek uh, knowledge and information and help from a lot of different sources so very quick read highly recommended um, one of the other books I've came across